Hey everybody, today we're going to be exploring the SARS CoV 2 main protease, um, as well as some ketone based inhibitors developed by Pfizer. Uh, joining us, we have Daniel, our structural biologist, as well as Mike, our medicinal chemist. Yeah, it'll be fun to look at these molecules today. These ketone based inhibitors were first discovered for the rhinovirus many years ago at Pfizer, and then they repurposed these for SARS CoV 1. And this compound in particular, this drug was one that they were really excited about, but when that, when that didn't turn into the huge pandemic that we feared, it got put on the shelf. But the good thing is these molecules are active against a number of different coronavirus proteases, including SARS-CoV-2. So they quickly pulled it off the shelf and have moved this to clinical trials. Now, this is actually a prodrug meaning that the actual drug is an alcohol here, but they've put this phosphate group on, and this phosphate group makes the molecule much more water-soluble. And they need it for this compound because this drug is given IV at a pretty high dose. So you want it to be very water-soluble for that. But once this compound gets into the body and, and gets into cells, the phosphate group, group is cleaved off by the enzyme alkaline phosphatase, and we get the actual drug, the ketone-based inhibitor that has an alcohol here. Let's uh, check that out in the context and uh, look at how it would be in the pocket. Um, so right here, we have uh, overlaid on top of each other the SARS-CoV-1 uh, main protease and the SARS-CoV-2 main protease. Um, so they're, they're not direct uh, yeah, related to each other, but you know, they're, they're somewhat similar. Um, so they're pr pretty much all the same protein structure here, and the only differences are these pink areas um, where it shows off the mutational differences uh, between the two coronaviruses proteases. So in, in the blue uh, teal color here, I believe we have the SARS-CoV-2 main protease, and in the white, we have the SARS-CoV-1 main protease. Right. Yeah, and so uh, when we look at it though, like this binding pocket where the drug actually sits and interacts uh, here in the green, um, this is pretty much unchanged between both versions. Um, yeah, there's, there's this little pink area that's different across the, the two variants. Um, but for the most part, this entire pocket is highly conserved, um, which is a good indicator. That means that you know, if this drug is something that would work on the uh, SARS-CoV-2 main protease, then it could also work for future coronaviruses as well. Uh, given how highly this binding pocket is conserved. By the time it gets over here, this part's gone. So that's why we see uh, over here, there's only the oxygen and there's yep. no phosphate group. So right. we'll use our MedChem tool. Now let's go ahead and delete one, two, three, four. Boom, perfect. Cool. So yeah, uh, so this drug would pretty much come and sit right, right uh, in there where you see it kind of going in. But then the interesting thing that happens is uh, right here, this uh, double bond actually becomes a, a single bond when it uh, goes through this covalent process here. So when it goes into the binding pocket, this carbon as part of the drug forms a covalent bond with the sulfur that's part of this cysteine 145 residue. Yeah, and this is the covalent reversible bond that really sticks this ligand in here in the protease. This ligand picks up a lot of really nice hydrogen bonds that we can see in nanome. Uh, so it fits in really well into this active site. Do you wanna talk a little bit about uh, all these nice hydrogen bonds uh, that we're seeing uh, happening between our, our ligand and our protein structure? Right, I mean, you, you can see a number of them, I think even starting over here with this indole cap here that uh, makes makes this hydrogen bond to this backbone carbonyl of, uh, of glutamic acid 166, I believe. And then if you follow along, you can see the amide here is also picking up a hydrogen bond to a backbone NH here and to a, back, to a carbonyl of uh, glutamine 189 here. So just a lot of nice interactions through here that we can see in nanom. Yeah, and uh, you, know, you could probably also see this uh, little bit of variation. So when we uh, did a RMSD calculation to overlay the two different protein structures, each one of them had this ligand docked in there. Um, so you can see the orientation is, is slightly different, but um, I don't really think that that 
makes much of a difference. You know, it's pretty much forming all the same hydrogen bonds and it's definitely forming that same covalent bond. Yeah, I mean, the, these two proteins, these two proteases are basically identical, as you said before, here in the active site. And it's pretty amazing in the crystal structures that the ligand really is right on top of itself. As you were saying, you can barely see any differences. It's really remarkable. Yeah, and then of course we have here the covalent bond there happening with the cysteine 145, which is part of the uh, catalytic diet there. So it's holding the, the inhibitor really tight. But I believe yeah, it's this, reversible, right? Yeah, it is reversible. And this, this alcohol here of the hydroxy ketone is also making some very nice hydrogen bonds. Uh, so it uh, really fits well. Yeah, that, that's a good point because there, there have been reports of optimization of peptidomimetics designed with the alpha ketoamide warheads. Uh, but in this case, in this study, we have asylum, methyl ketones, and hydroxy methyl ketones, like you mentioned, right? So, cool. Um, yeah, let's look at some of the properties of the the chemical by itself, real quick. Um, so, I went ahead and used the chemical properties tool to generate a plot here. And so, Mike, yeah, well, what's your uh, what's your take on the properties of this molecule and? sort of um, yeah, maybe comparing it to other chemicals that you're more familiar with. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, you know, this drug is, is given IV, so we don't have to worry about trying to get it absorbed from the GI tract. So, you know, the things that we're gonna be thinking about are the solubility. And as we mentioned before, having the phosphate on there improves the solubility. Um, and it does that partly by increasing the total polar surface area and lowering the log D or log P. So uh, yeah, thanks Mike and Daniel and thanks everybody for watching. And uh, it's always great to explore these structures. You know, it's helped end the pandemic, get more scientists and more people uh, working on this. And if you're interested in partaking in some of the science, uh, there's actually an initiative happening with Escalate for Cove where they're looking for more crowdsourced scientists to help come up with different chemicals to solve the coronavirus uh, pandemic. So um, yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks, the Steve. Next Thank time. you.